All right, you're being asked what mass of precipitate will form when you mix two solutions. I stole this one from online. I've got 25 milliliters of 0.2 molar barium chloride reacting with 35 milliliters of 0.125 sodium sulfate. When you combine these two solutions, you're gonna get a mixture of ions and two of those ions can't coexist in the same solution. You're gonna get a solid falling out. How do you figure out how many grams of that solid will form. You make a balanced chemical equation to figure out what the solid is. You figure out how many moles of each of these reactants you have. You'll have to figure out which one is the limiting reactant or reagent, depending on what your teacher calls it. You're gonna use that to figure out how many moles of that solid product you'll end up with. And then you'll have to convert that to grams because it asks you for the mass of precipitate. So let's start this off by getting the balanced chemical equation. BaCl2 is an aqueous compound, and you can react it with sodium sulfate, which is also an aqueous compound. When you have two aqueous ionic compounds, you should try a double displacement reaction. I'm going to pair the Na with the Cl. That makes sodium chloride which hopefully you know is aqueous, but you probably have solubility rules you can check to make sure. And then you have to pair the other cation, in this case barium, with the other anion, in this case sulfate. Barium sulfate, if you check your solubility rules, is insoluble. It, it will make a solid. It cannot dissolve in water. Here is my chemical equation, but I need to actually balance it. I've got one BA on both sides. I've got two CLs, but I only have one CL here. So I'm gonna have to put a two in front here. I've got two NAs and now I've got two NAs. I've got an SO4 and an SO4. Here's my balanced chemical reaction. So the barium chloride and the sodium sulfate will make me some barium sulfate and some stuff I don't care about. Cool. We're going to need to figure out how many moles of each reactant we actually have. Now, because you're given milliliters or volume along with molarity or moles per liter, the way that we're going to do that calculation is N equals C times V concentration times volume. I'm going to do it for barium chloride first. The concentration is 0.200 moles per liter, and I'm going to multiply it by liters, and this is important because I have per liter here, that needs to be converted into liters. The way that you do that is to divide it by a thousand. You're really just moving the decimal place, one, two, three spaces to the left, but hey, use your calculator if it makes you happy. 0 0.025 liters. All right. I'm going to multiply these. I'm going to take that number that I just calculated times 0.2. I end up with 0 0.005 moles of BaCl2. Now I'm going to have to do that again for sodium sulfate. But again, I was given concentration and volume because I'm mixing two solutions. That's how we measure how much and how concentrated the solutions are. The concentration is 0.125 moles per liter this time, and the volume is 0 0.035 liters. I used the trick of moving the decimal place in my head, but again, divide by a thousand on your calculator if, uh, if you're not into that. Well, I, I do want a calculator to do this. It's 0.125 times 0.035. That gives me 0 0.004375 moles of sodium sulfate. All right, I've got the number of moles of each of the reactant. I have to figure out which one is limiting. Now, I can tell you which one is limiting right off the bat. We, we need one of each of these particles, and so the lower number is going to be the limiting reactant. But let's say that those numbers were, uh, you know, different from each other. You'll have to figure out which one's limiting on your own. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do that. Your teacher probably taught you a method that they want you to use. My personal 
method is to take the number of moles that I have of that thing and divide it by the coefficient that it has in the balanced chemical equation. Dividing by one is easy, it's 0 0.005 here. And uh, if I do that for this, for this one, I actually end up with the same number as well because I'm dividing by its coefficient. But again, if that had been a seven, you divide by seven. That's why it's important to have the balanced chemical equation. After you do that division, whichever one of those resulting numbers is smaller is corresponding to your limiting reactant. In this case, it's exactly as we thought, the limiting reactant here is the sodium sulfate. Great. Now we're gonna have to figure out how many moles of product actually formed. You do that by starting with the number of moles of the limiting reactant, in our case, 0 0.004375 moles of Na2SO4. And I'm going to use a mole ratio. I multiply by a fraction. And on top of the fraction is the coefficient of the thing that I'm solving for. I'm looking for BASO4, and I am trading one BASO4 for each one of the Na2SO4s. I realize this example is not ideal because I have so many ones. It's the one that I found when I Googled it. The point is that whatever these coefficients are in your balanced chemical equation, those are the ones you're going to have to use here. I'm putting BASO4 on the top because it's the solid, by the way. And I'm putting Na2SO4 on the bottom because it was the limiting reactant the whole time. When I do that multiplication, I always think about how the Na2SO4s cancel out, and I'm going to be left with moles of BASO4, which is exactly what I'm being asked to find. 004375 moles of BASO4 has formed. But we were asked for massive precipitate, so we've got to convert it to grams. I'm going to need an extra piece of paper for that. How do you convert moles to grams? Well, the answer is that, uh, sorry, mass equals moles times molar mass. We are being given, or rather, we have done a lot of work to calculate that we have this many moles of BASO4, but we don't yet have the molar mass measured in grams per mole. That's what the periodic table is for. The molar mass of BASO4 is whatever a BA weighs, 137.3. Added to whatever an S weighs, 32.1 according to this periodic table, and four O's. Each O weighs 16. When I combine those together, I end up with, pff, who knows, 137.3, 32.1, and four 16s combined to make 233.4, and that's in grams per mole. I'm going to put that in here, and then I can do the multiplication. The moles will cancel it, and I'm going to be left with my answer in grams. Hallelujah. Times 0 0.004375. I end up with 1.021125 grams. Now, I know that you know that's not your final answer. You've got to use significant figures. Let's go see what we were given. Four sig figs, three significant figures, four, three. We also used uh, this number here, which was four. I kept one decimal place for all of those. In the end, this number had one, two, three, four sig figs. So I need three significant figures because of the way this concentration was measured. So my final answer here is 1.0 and that two we're just gonna chop off the rest of this number because it's below what would be an extra half for a 0.5. One is way less than five. So it's 1.02 grams. There's the mass of precipitate. But even if you're not here for the number itself, 
you were here for the practice, not a test question. We talk about practice. You need the balanced chemical equation. You get the moles of each reactant, probably with n equals c times v. You'll use whatever method your teacher wants you to use to find the limiting reactant. I showed you mine. You can use that number, well, the original mole number for the limiting reactant to get the moles of the precipitate that actually forms. And then you can use molar mass to calculate the actual mass. Hey, it took 10 minutes, but these questions always take forever. And uh, I wish you only the best. Cheers.